Hi, I'm Pete Meyer, technical editor of Motor Age magazine. Lead acid batteries have been in use on cars for over 100 years, and their proper testing is an important skill for technicians to understand. And that's the topic for this month's The Trainer. The battery is made up of individual cells. Each cell contains lead and lead oxide plates alternately, immersed in a solution of sulfuric acid in water. The solution is called electrolyte and is roughly 65% water. It is the chemical reaction, or electrolysis, between these materials that creates the electromotive potential we need for electricity. Automotive batteries fall into a category of batteries called SLI, for starting, lights, and ignition. They are designed to deliver short bursts of energy. They come in three different designs the wet cell, the gel cell, and the AGM or absorbed glass mat. The wet cell is the most conventional design and can be serviceable or maintenance free. AGM batteries are still considered a liquid design but uses matting to suspend the electrolyte close to the plate materials. Gel cells, however, are just that, using a silica additive that causes the electrolyte to set or stiffen up. Both the AGM and gel cell batteries require different charging methods when serviced and can be damaged if improperly charged. The battery and its post should be kept clean using a mixture of baking soda and water. Dirt buildup on the case can cause an electrical path to form between the battery posts, resulting in a surface discharge that will eventually drain the battery. Be sure to wear safety equipment, that's eyeglasses and gloves, when servicing batteries to prevent acid burns. Disconnect the negative battery cable and use caution when connecting charging equipment to prevent an electrical arc that could ignite the explosive fumes produced by the electrolyte during charging. Charging a battery is best using a smart charger. This type of charger charges a discharged battery in three steps to avoid overheating and the resulting damage. In the first step, the charger charges at the maximum amperage and voltage rating of the charger and replenishes about 80% of the battery's original charge. It then moves to step two, or the absorption rate charge. At this rate, the battery is charged at a constant 14.4 volts with a diminishing current until the battery reaches about 98% charge. From there, a float step is used to finish it off with a charging voltage of 13.4 volts and less than one amp of current. When reinstalling, thoroughly clean the battery cable ends and tighten securely. Use any of a variety of products to protect the battery cables and ends from corrosion caused by venting hydrogen gas. The first test we'll do is a very quick inspection of the battery and charging system's health using your digital multimeter. Connect your meter to the battery as close to the actual battery post as possible. Static battery voltage is an indication of the battery's state of charge and should be at least 12.4 volts in order to proceed. Generally, a battery reading of less than 12.4 volts is too low to accurately reflect the health of the battery itself. Readings below 10.5 volts is a pretty good indication that the battery has a failed cell and needs to be replaced before the rest of the car can be tested. If the battery is low, charge the battery following the battery manufacturer's recommendations. Remember, AGM and gel cell batteries cannot be charged using the same methods you may be used to on conventional wet cell designs. With the battery charged and the surface charges removed, connect your meter and select its min, max, or record function. This will allow it to record the minimum and maximum readings it sees as you continue your test. Now start the car, allow it to run for a moment, and shut off. Repeat three times. Perfect, that's all. Going back to your meter, retrieve the minimum reading. That is the loaded voltage recorded by the meter and should be no less than 9.6 volts at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. This method prevents unnecessary damage to the battery and alternator caused by heat when the system is artificially loaded with a traditional carbon pile tester. To be honest, I haven't used one of these for over 10 years, and what else is going to stress the car's battery more than the starter itself?
Next, take a look at the max recorded voltage. This is system charging voltage and generally runs between 13.5 to 15.0 volts. Be sure to check the OE specs for the car you are testing. If max voltage is no better than the static voltage you first measured, you need to take a closer look at the charging system itself. Most handheld battery testers test batteries using conductance. What is conductance? Well, what is a conductor? Something that will allow current to flow through it, right? Conductance is a unique electrical measurement that tests the ability of a battery to pass current through its internal structure, the plates, electrolyte, connecting grids, right through to the posts. It is measured by probing the battery with a small AC current ripple that generates a small AC voltage response. Conductance is the relative ratio between the varying AC current and the AC voltage. Conductance testing does not require a battery to be fully charged for testing. This test can also detect open or shorted cells or other cell defects. That, together with the information you input, allows the tool to quickly determine the battery's state of health. I use an oscilloscope, high amp current probe, and a voltage test lead. This testing takes approximately five minutes, including hooking the current probe around a battery lead, testing the voltage across the battery terminals, and running the engine for two minutes, while graphing the voltage and current that is either going in or out of the battery. The current probe needs to be hooked to a place that will be able to test all of the current going in and out of the battery, but it makes no difference whether it's on the positive or negative cable. In my experience, the negative battery cable is the best and easiest place to hook the current probe. With these two quick hookups, you are able to run a relative compression test, test the ability of the battery to produce energy, check the integrity of the starter motor circuits, and examine the charging ability and the integrity of the generator. Any graphing multimeter or scope will work for this test, so you can use what you have in the shop. With this testing, we are looking for the minimum battery voltage when the starter solenoid is closed, or inrush voltage, and for the maximum amperage that the starter will draw before the motor starts turning. We can zoom in and take a look at the integrity of the starter solenoid contacts as they close, the operation of the starter motor, the maximum charge rate of the generator when the engine starts, and the minimum charge rate after the engine has been running for two minutes. With all of this information, it is easy to see exactly what is happening in the starting and charging system. It also is easy to perform a relative compression test while the scope is hooked up. All that is needed on most cars is to depress the throttle to the floor and crank the engine for a few seconds after disabling the ignition and or fuel system. There are two important numbers I look for with this test. The inrush voltage, not lower than 8.5 volts, and a minimum charge rate of 3 amps or less after charging for two minutes. An inrush voltage below 8.5 volts is a good indication of a weak battery, and a continual charge rate above 3 amps is a great indication of a sulfated battery. The only way a sulfated battery can be found in its early stages is with a current probe monitoring the current going into the battery. A carbon pile load tester or a capacitance tester will not find this problem. Consider what an extra 10 or 15 amps of current load will do to the life of a generator. If a sulfated battery is found, more testing needs to be done to find out the reason the battery is sulfated. As battery ages, this is a normal process, but if the battery is only a year or so old, most likely a problem in the electrical system has caused this condition. Some of the causes could be parasitic draw is too high, which is discharging the battery overnight, and the generator charging the battery once the engine is started, or a voltage regulator that is causing the generator to overcharge the battery. Of all the methods you can use to test a battery and its related systems, the scope tells you the most in the least amount of time, and draws a picture you can share with your customer. Today's cars are becoming more and more precise, and even the little things can cause problems down the road. So whenever you encounter a weak battery, make sure that you test the battery and starting system to determine the actual cause. That'll do it for this edition of The Trainer. See you next month.